Um, I play Miss Havisham, Miss Amelia Havisham, um, as a young woman. And I play a character called Honoria Barbary, who you find out who she's going to become in the series. Um, but we are young, sort of, we're friends with each other, aren't we? Yes, yeah. This is, you know, Dickensian, 20 half hour episodes yeah. of a made up Dickensian world. It's an, it's an incredible, audacious undertaking. Yeah, I think it's. Um, what's really nice is that. Um, it stayed really loyal to the books, the writing, what we know about the characters, and then some parts of their backstories and um, and some new characters entirely have been invented, uh, which is a really kind of fun thing to play with. Um, so we were lucky in that our characters, we had some information on them um, previously from uh, whether it was before or after that their kind of world we're in now. But um, yeah, it's yeah, and I think it, it's it made sense to do it actually when you think about it. His Dickens's novels are so full of backstory and different characters and all very well written and well rounded so it made sense to sort of put it into a new world where you could explore them further I mean so much interesting stuff in the books happens before the book started so it made sense to sort of develop that further and investigate it I think. Do you actually think that Dickens would have uh, would have enjoyed this kind of exploration? Completely. He'd love it. I think this is very in the spirit of yeah. Dickens. Um, yeah pure yes, entertainment. Yes it's very in the spirit of him because it's funny but it's also tragic and and yeah. it's rich and it's you know I think he would have liked it and you know he he chose to distribute his stories in these sort of little births I think mm. he'd love this idea that you just you know wrapped up in the story you want to know what happens next and it's sort of fed to you yeah in that way and I think a lot of people can think of Dickens as being this very classic writer who writes a lot of kind of bleak dark stories set in London and I think actually he's really funny when mm. I, before doing this I went back and um, read some more of his novels, it, especially, obviously, Great Expectations, and I was surprised at how funny I found it. So it'd be interesting from Miss Havisham's uh, point of view, because uh, we know a lot about her, as obviously she's a ma massive character in Great Expectations, yeah. so we find out why she became so um, reclusive. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and I think it's no secret for anyone that's read Great Expectations that um, she's jilted on her wedding day and um, and then stays holed up in Satis house for 25 years um, so you kind of see that journey and, and I think quite often people can kind of put Miss Havisham into this box of being this crazy lady who's who's just um, shut the world out and I think actually she was a real young woman before that who had dreams and hopes and, and a life and um, and it's nice to kind of see what might have been had she sort of found her way in life a bit more how do you prepare for, for roles like this? I mean, um, how, how do you get prepared? I think, I don't know, a lot of people had said to me, and I'm sure you've had a similar thing, um, kept reminding me, like, oh, this is such an iconic character, such an iconic character, and I sort of felt a bit like, oh, God, the pressure's on. But I think, <laughs> I think there's, I didn't like to think of it like I'm playing Miss Havisham when she's young, because I think then you sort of have a, a certain expectation of what she becomes. I think I, it was important to look at her as a new character um, and then let these things happen to her. So I I guess in the way that I would approach any other character and not try to get hung up on the fact that it's this iconic sort of thing. Yeah, know. yeah and I think you, you don't want to sort of anticipate what's coming even though you mm. know and the audience will sort of know what's coming. You just have to play them as young women in a very specific time and place. Mm. I, think, I, I mean, I think we all did a lot of work on what it was like at that time, you know, what kind of things were expected of young women, what you are what you were up against, what it, just what that world was like. And mm. it's such a fascinating world. We read this amazing book um, about Dickensian London and it's just, it's just you know, mm. it's hard to imagine. It's so different from today. So lots so, of sort of research and... What, what, what did you take from that period? What, what are the things that kind of defined that period for you? Um, I'm very grateful for our National Health Service yes. <laughs> and, and also sanitation. For, yeah, I think for women it was just a completely different world mm. and it's so hard for us to imagine yeah. as young women today um, how unfair it was in a way. How repressed and they were repressed. and it's, you know, that you were, you're, you're, you were so limited in what you could do with your life and I think there are a lot of very brilliant, you know, your character, a lot of women with so much to give but they're so repressed by the society that they live in that their paths go in sort of different ways to the way they would now, so mm. we're very lucky.